Hi, welcome to musicmoose.org. This is DJ James. Um, you've already, you may have already seen the lesson that I, where I talked about modes and uh, dealing a little bit with modal harmony. Today, with this lesson, what I'd like to do is to take some of the things that we worked on in the first modal lesson and transport it to dealing with some more common, um, more common chord progressions and how do we use modal theory when we're playing in a tonal context. In a lot of ways, it's, it's quite simple, and it hinges on the concept of what I call the scale of the moment. So we'll start out with a normal 2-5-1 progression in, uh, in C major, which of course would be D minor, G7, to C major 7. Now when we're playing in that, with that 2-5-1 progression, tonally, generally the way that we think of playing in that, in that is one of two ways. One is that, all three of those chords are in the C major, uh, in the key of C major. So we can solo over that in C major, for instance. So that would be one way that we could approach playing in that, just thinking of it entirely as in C major. Another way, and probably one that's a little bit more advanced, is dealing with arpeggios, which is usually the way that people first deal with jazz theory. So if we're playing D, mid, or D minor 7, excuse me, we have our arpeggio there. Two, our G7, or transmogrified, and to C major 7, or, or any way you want to sort of transpose it, transmogrify it, play it, or whatever, any, whatever inversion. So generally, those two approaches to jazz are the first few that we learn. If you want to take a more modal approach, which in some ways opens up new worlds, opens up ideas and things that you can do when you're playing your solos, the key is through what I already called the scale of the moment. So in that 2-5-1 progression, what we generally have to think of is over each chord, there's a scale happening. And if we think of those scales as related to modes, all of it starts to make sense. And the best way to do it, for instance, in C major is to deal with what degree each chord is starting on or what note each, uh, each chord is starting on. So if we think of D minor seven, we have a few modes that are available to us. Uh, the two normal modes that would be available over D minor seven would be D Dorian or D Aeolian. Now the way that we deal with the scale of the moment, the way that we sort of link our modes together, is to understand the chords that surround each other. So if we're starting with D minor 7, we know that the following chord is going to be G7. Now what are the major notes of the G7, uh, G7 chord? G, B, D, and F. If we now go back to the D minor 7, we're going to use the D minor 7 in some ways to be a precursor, to be an omen as to what's going to happen next. So instead of playing the D Aeolian, which would be D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, and D, we'll play D Dorian. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D. Why would we play D Dorian instead of D Aeolian? Because of the difference between the B flat and the B. If we play Aeolian and play the B flat, well then we're kind of forecasting what might be a G minor chord. Whereas if we play the B, we're forecasting the G7. Now if we were playing the G minor, thinking of a progression that might sound something like, or actually a better progression would be, which would kind of, in some ways, be a, um, a five of five situation, kind of a secondary dominant situation, then the D Aeolian might be the better choice. But if we're going to the G7 to the dominant chord, the D Dorian would be the better choice because of that raised sixth, because of that B. Now we foreshadow the fact that we're going to have a B within the next chord. And not only that, our target chord, our uh, tonic, is the C major seven, which itself has a B in it as the seven. So by beginning with the D Dorian, we can lay on that B and really emphasize the fact that we are in C major. Then moving into the G7, so 
before I get to that, if we think of the D Dorian or the D minor seven, then the scale of the moment, the mode of the moment would be D Dorian. Then we move to the G7. Now we have a few options with the G7 as well. Um, but generally, whenever you get to a dominant chord, the option that you want to use is Mixolydian, which is the mode that's based off of the fifth degree. Um, the reason that we want to use that is because we have our flat seven in there, our minor seven. And it gives us a sound. Oh, well, if we put it in an altered sixth, it gives us that sound. But we get that nice seven in there, the tritone between the B and the F, and gives a nice little crunch between there. And the thing that it really does is it sets up the resolution now to the E in the top of that C major seven chord. You can almost hear the inner lines that are working there. If we just kind of pick out one line through that comping, that two, five, one. We'll listen to it one more time. So by thinking of this as the scale of the moment, what's happening over each chord and approaching it modally, you have kind of a, a different way to portend the next chord, to, uh, to sort of create a situation of setting up your listener. And in future lessons, what we're going to get to is ways of not setting up your listener, ways of kind of um, not really sort of predicting what's going to happen next by using different modes, um, specifically based off of minor scales, that will make things sound a little bit more funky, make things sound a little bit more hip. But for those of you just starting out with jazz, I think, I think this is the way to go. Know your modes and uh, learn how they work over the changes. Learn your scale of the moment. All right, for musicmoose.org, this is DJ James with uh, your lesson on modal and tonal theory.